Thank you for tuning in. I hope everyone is doing well. I wanted to do this update as it relates to DronePan and talk to you a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes. This is a bit of a different type of video than what I normally do, but since DronePan was released in September of last year, that's September of 2015, a few weeks ago I decided to make it open source and put it in the hands of the community because originally DronePan was started just as a proof of concept and seeing if I could learn the DJI SDK. But since we've gone open source, some very good things have happened. And as you can see here, we recently pushed out a new version that has the latest DJI SDK. There's support for Osmo, the Phantom 4, and a bunch of new settings. And the user feedback has been very positive. And I just want to share some of the behind the scenes stuff so you guys are aware of what's going on. And hopefully we can continue to make this product better and get it in the hands of every user that has a DJI aircraft or a DJI Osmo. Since DronePan went live in the App Store in September of last year, you can see that there have been almost 9,000 downloads. And a lot of people have said, hey, Dennis, we'd love to pay for this. You should charge for this app. And the reality of it is it's easy to say, okay, 9,000 times, let's say $10 or $20, that's 90,000 or $180,000. Well, we all know when you charge for apps, you definitely don't get as many downloads and installs. And to me, this isn't about the money. It's about creating a good product, bringing a community together. And as you guys know, I've just been very open and sharing this type of information on the channel. So that being said, we have predominantly US-based users Germany is next, and, and then we have pretty much a split, 50-50 split between iPhone and iPad users. One of the reasons behind my decision to open source was there were quite a few bugs that I had run into with the DJI SDK. Now it's early stage, and DJI has been very supportive in helping work through those bugs, but it's really a monumental task for one person to take on. So the decision to open source was driven by trying to bring others in. And as an example, uh, Chris from Norway has gotten in and done some amazing things with the project. And just as an example, he recently refactored all of my Objective-C code and everything is now Swift-based. So I'm learning to get up to speed with Swift. But if you're looking for a good project to get involved with and learn Swift, definitely check out DronePan on GitHub. Another thing that we have going on with the project is a Gitter chat. Now, I'm relatively new to Gitter, but we set it up for DronePan and it's amazing. You can get in here and see the conversation that's going on as it relates to development and just the future roadmap for where we want to take DronePan. On the other side of the spectrum from development, we have our community and this is probably my favorite part of DronePan. I log into our Facebook group every morning just to see some of the amazing things that users are posting. And I want to share a few of those with you. So this one is from Michael in Denmark. He posted this beautiful panorama that he shot with drone pan and stitched. You can see just how vibrant the colors are. This is what's known as a little planet or tiny planet. It's a feature you can do when you stitch shot by David and it's of a baseball stadium. So that looks really cool. Here's another tiny planet. It says it was taken at about 400 feet with winds of up to 20 miles an hour. So the DJI aircraft did a good job of holding its position. And here's an example from Roger. Now he flies an Inspire 1 Pro and has a 25 millimeter lens. You can see how many photos that he actually took in the air with drone pan. I believe there were about 120 photos here that he used to stitch together this panorama. This is one I actually shot a couple days ago using my Phantom 4 and shot it at about 200 feet, stitched it together nicely. The drone pan on the Phantom 4 has performed really well and so far I've been impressed with the results. The last panorama I want to demonstrate is really interesting. This was shot with drone pan for the Osmo. And this panorama is uh, one of our users selling an Alfa Romeo car. So you can see that cool little planet effect as you zoom in. And then we can pan around and see 
all the aspects of the interior of the car. And in addition to that, he's put little annotations so you can hear the horn honk. Another thing you can do is hear the ignition as it starts up. So really cool effects that uh, he's put into this panorama. And so we're pretty excited that this was shot with drone pan. The last thing that I'd like to share with you guys is just some of the things that we're working on as it relates to drone pan. We're talking about waypoints, being able to uh, save your previous pano and be able to shoot it again. Here's one for uh, automatic exposure bracketing and HDR, um, field stitching possibly so that you can preview the pano in the field. So a lot of exciting stuff on the product roadmap and I never really imagined that just something as simple as a panorama with a drone could uh, receive this kind of feedback and growth. And so I hope as a community we can continue to grow it. And right now it supports the DJI aircraft as well as the 3DR Solo. Many of you have asked about support for third party aircraft. We'd love to do that. It's just not easy to do if there's not uh, an SDK. So I highly encourage you to get involved somehow. Join our Facebook community. Uh, get involved with GitHub. Join the Gitter chat. There are many ways to connect and just share your thoughts. It's a free app. We hope you download it and use it and help us uh, continue to make it better. So I hope this video was useful in giving you a little background behind DronePan, what is going on. If you have any questions, comments, or even suggestions, uh, please feel free to post them below. And until next time, thanks for watching.